All right, so today we're going to look at modular routers. It's a neat little mod. It only adds one block, but it adds a lot of upgrades and modules that control what that block actually does. So I'm going to look at a lot of those today. So the first one here is the dropper module. It's pretty self-explanatory. It basically makes the router into a configurable dropper. So you can configure like what side it comes out filtering like what it drops and such and you can put various uh things in like the pickup delay module or augment and stuff like that so like things won't automatically pick it up right away so it's pretty neat it's pretty straightforward then you got the flinger module which is a fun one because it shoots items out and it can take various uh also you know options and you can control the velocity it shoots out of and the angle and all that and also you know ones like the pickup delay and stuff like that so that one's pretty nice then there's the vacuum module which basically turns the router into a vacuum hopper with various configurations, you know, you can specify what direction it goes, then you can give it upgrades like making it, uh, like this makes it pick up experience. And uh, you can also make it longer range and stuff like that. So that works pretty cool. Then you've got, I believe this is the block placer and the block breaker. So once again, you can control what face it breaks out of. You can filter it, so what it breaks. Then the placer, you can do the same thing. What side it places from. And are also using the sender, which basically sends items in a straight line to another inventory, I believe. To any inventory directly along an axis with clear line of sight. So basically this one's placing, this one's breaking, and then shooting it back over to this one. So that one's pretty cool, pretty useful. Now these are some, uh, these are, I believe, pullers. So the puller one and the puller two. So the puller one pulls from an adjacent inventory. So this one's pulling blocks of diamonds out of that chest into its buffer. And then it's sending it over to this chest. Then this one is using a puller mark two, which you bind to an inventory by crouch right clicking. So it's pulling it up, then it's getting sent down. Then this one's pulling it and shooting it across. Now this is an interesting one. This is one of the reasons I originally found the mod was for the extruder and the extruder mark two. So the extruder works kind of like the old Tinker's Mechworks, I think, mod from 1.7. The drawbridge. And of course you can put speed upgrades in and everything. And then it retracts when you take away the redstone. If we look at the module's configuration here, there's its inventory of what it's placing. So it places that, then those two, then that. And it goes out the right side. Okay, that's the Mark II. Okay. Yeah, so it's not actually... The Mark II doesn't actually place it. It places template blocks that just look like the blocks. You can also give it the Mimic Augment here, which makes it take on the properties such as lighting, redstone emission, etc. The Extruder Mark I just basically places out of the buffer and it actually places the blocks, and then it retracts back into the buffer. So this one's like the old drawbridge. This is like a more advanced one. Now over here, outside of this area, I kind of built a uh, funny little thing here out of extruder mark twos with mimic augments. That's like instant little room. These are all template frames, but with the mimic augment, so you can see through them and stuff like that. And if any of them were emitting light, then it would have uh, done that. 
Also, there's another upgrade called the pushing augment, which increases the force that it pushes things away when it extrudes. I'm going to demonstrate it like this. I don't remember how many are in there, but it's pretty funny. Let's see how many upgrades are in there. Uh, 16 pushing augments. So that one's kind of hilarious. So now we're up to the detector module. This module, basically, if I remember what it does, emits a redstone signal from the router if the item in the router's buffer passes the module's filter. So basically, here I've got a detector set up for factory block, and I've got a hopper with some laboratory blocks and some factory blocks. And if I let this go, so there's the block in its uh, buffer using a little integrated dynamics reader. And as soon as it hits the factory block, it's going to emit redstone out the back to stop this from pulling it out and then out the right to light up the light. That's why there's two of them in there. One for the back, one for the back, one for the right. So there you go. So now it no longer allows it to be pulled out, and it's lighting up that redstone lamp. Now the next two are kind of funny, and these are the player modules. This lets the router interact with the player's inventory. So this one, these are both bound to my inventory, but this one is going to push items into my inventory. So see, my inventory starts filling with diamond swords. Now this one is going to pull from my inventory. If I let it go, it'll empty my entire inventory. Let's go ahead and put these swords back. So that's the player interface, or the player module. So then, I've got some more over here. So these two routers right here demonstrate the fluid screen module which transfer fluid in or out of the router in a direction, and you have to have some sort of fluid container in its buffer. And it can also place fluids and pick up fluids in the world. So here's one nice little demonstration of it. So here I've got a router with a creative fluid tank with refined canola oil, and it's placing the oil to its left. And if I get some seeds, this one is set to pick up liquid from its left, but it's filtered to only empowered oil. So this is if it picks it up or puts it out. Then this is pushing the fluid up. So it pulls the fluid from the right into its internal tank here, which is in this case a thermal expansion portable tank, and it outputs it out to the top. So if I sit here and drop seeds into it, boom, boom. So this makes for a good method of helping to automate canola automation, or helping to automate oil production. So here is the void module. This one's pretty straightforward. It voids an item from its inventory, or from its buffer. And you can filter it and put some upgrades and stuff in it. So it's pretty straightforward. And here I set it, have it set to one operation per redstone pulse. As you can see, it's got 63. Now it's got 62. Now it's got 61. So that's pretty straightforward. This, I believe, is demonstrating the activator module. So this simulates a right click from a player, basically. So this router here is set to pull bone meal from the chest above it and then use the activator to right click with that bone meal on the crop here. And this one is set to, I don't remember what this one's set to do. 
This one's set to vacuum. And it's set to... I'm not sure if this one was actually doing anything. Yeah, I think that activator module is just in there by accident. But pretty much this one is just harvesting the uh, result into the chest there with the vacuum module. This one here is trying to demonstrate some of the filtering filters. So this is the regular expression filter. So basically all of these modules, if I get like say a dropper module here, so you can set up, you know, what the module works on. So it's filter right here and you can do the usual blacklist, NBT, or dict, metadata, all that kind of stuff. Say you wanted to filter more than just nine items. So that's when you would pull out the bulk item filter. Then you could put in more of them. And then that would just fit in here and take up one slot. So there's more than just the bulk item filter. There's the mod filter, which basically will match certain mods. So if I put that in there, now it will match items from the chisel mod or it will mad match items from actual editions. And then you could just throw that into a slot. Then there is the inspection filter, which lets you basically look for certain things. Like say I want a durability of less than 100 and a food value of greater than two. Then that would match those things. So I could have match any, match all. It's pretty nice. Then there's the regular expression filter. So here I've got a regular expression that matches if the item name starts with block of or ends with block. So here I've got some ingots. I've got a block of gold and I've got a grass block. Currently in here, in this polar module currently, is a regular expression that just matches block of in the beginning. So it's only going to pull block of gold. It's not going to pull the grass. It's not gonna pull the ingots, only the blocks of gold. This one's moving a lot faster because I have a lot of speed upgrades in it. You can also put stack upgrades to make it work on more than one item at a time. But anyway, so see that matched just block of. So that's the regular expression filter. Now here is a new addition. This is the distributor module. It will distribute items from the router's buffer into multiple inventory inventories, and you can pick, you know, round robin, random, nearest, so on and so forth. So here I've got it bound to all of these, and it's set to round robin, and then I'm using the regulator augment to make sure it only puts so much in each chest. So I believe I have it set to eight. Oh yeah, and augments go in these square slots right there. So if I put that in there, let it rip, it's going to start putting items in these strong boxes, one at a time. And it will stop once they all hit eight. So that's pretty slick. It's a neat little augment, or module. So some of the other augments there are, so you've also got things like the, let's see. The stack upgrade makes it work on more than one item at a time. The speed upgrade is self-explanatory. The security upgrade makes it so that only you can do things or people that you list can do things to the router. The camouflage upgrade can disguise the router. So if I say, got this camouflage upgrade, put this router here, and I believe I right click. Crouch right click, there we go. So now I put it in here. Now the router looks like that block. So it's a good way to make builds look better by hiding routers that are doing things. There's the sync upgrade so that you can sync multiple routers into executing at the same time. This is very useful for things like placing, breaking, or extruding. 
there's the fluid transfer upgrade that basically makes uh, fluid move faster in and out of it. There's the muffler upgrade that can make it quieter or get rid of particles. Then the blast upgrade that makes it more immune to damage. Then you've got the filters. Then you've got the fast pickup, which is for things like the vacuum module, which I guess just the vacuum. There's the pickup delay for things that drop items. It can raise the delay before something can pick it up. There's the range up and the range down, which are pretty self-explanatory. There's the redstone augment that basically, so you can set a redstone behavior for the entire router, but then you can use this augment to make a specific module. So say you had one with multiple modules like this, you could say, okay, I will always want you to, you know, put this on ignore. And I always want you to pull items, but I only want you to activate them when you have redstone. That kind of thing. So then you've got the regulator, which you saw here. Which basically put, you, makes it so you can put limits on inserting and pulling and stuff like that. There's the stack augment that makes it work with more than one item at a time. There's the experience vacuum, which is for the vacuum module to collect experience orbs. There's the Mimic Augment, which you saw on the something. I don't know if I actually used it, but it makes the Extruder Mark II basically mimic the properties of the items, of the blocks. Then there's the Pushing Augment, which you saw outside. Now behind me is a quick system I set up to demonstrate a lot of these things working together. And I basically set up full canola oil op uh, automation, mainly using modular routers. I did use a few ducts here and there, but for the most part it's using routers. So if I'm going to go ahead and switch one of these out for an empty one, so the system will run. So you've got the farmer over here farming. This router here is pulling the canola out and shooting it into this drawer. This router is pulling the seeds out and shooting it into this drawer. This router, I believe, this router is sending seeds different places, so I believe it's sending them to each of these display stands. Are we out of seeds again? I guess I just... So, one thing that this setup does not have is conversion from uh, canola to seeds, because I didn't think to put in a crafter to do that, but anyway. So it's beaming, you can see it beaming canola seeds to those. And it's also, I believe, shooting seeds up into here. So that when it needs crystallized seeds, this one drops, drops them there and shoots it with a laser. Then this one vacuums them up and puts them into there. Then this one... Oh no, I think that one beams crystallized ones into this one. Then this one, I believe. So this one, I believe, pulls them from over there and beams them into there. Or this one beams them into there when in need be, I think. And one of these beams them over to here. So this router here pulls the canola into this router and then inserts it into the two presses. Then this one here is the same setup as over there where it's in it's a dropping refined oil. And then there's a scanner that says when it's refined oil give these two a redstone signal so then they pulse drop the two seeds in and then this one picks it up and is filtered to empowered which let's make this work a bit. So now that's going to start working. And it's basically just dropping both seeds at the same time. So the system's not perfect. It very well can get stuck. It has uh, no repeat protection, so it won't try again if it fails or anything like that. But it's just a... Uh, kind of showing how a lot of these modules can work together.
I mean, I could have had a bunch of routers farming these, but this was just a lot uh, simpler to do a large scale farm. So it's pretty interesting. It's a pretty interesting mod. So I hope uh, everyone enjoyed. And I hope people try this mod out because it's a really nice mod that I love, but uh, I don't see it very many places. So until next time, guys, see you later.